Amen. Well, good to see you guys again in person, online. Let's go ahead and stand and welcome to our after Independence Day celebration. Praise God. It's good to be American. It's even better to be a Christian. So praise God. Amen. An American Christian or people do who just love God. So this morning, we, we have a very, very, very special service for y'all today. So glad y'all came and tuned in. So let's keep in mind that we are here just to glorify Christ and, and wherever we do. And we love you guys. We're, and we're excited. And as they lead us into worship, let's, let's just lift up our voices and, and exalt Jesus Christ. And let's keep that focus always there with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, gang. All yours. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Declare that. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the best. victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you love there's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory.
Hallelujah. I was glorying so much the Lord, I forgot it's my turn to talk. Praise God. It's Hallelujah. Okay. Well, right now, it's our time to receive our offering this morning. So if you're online, just go to your church app. You can type that in. Go there and, and sow in what your tithe is, your offering is, and give to God what it is. If, if you're here, we have a, an offering bucket back there at the door and also back there by the sound booth. You, we have envelopes back there. You can We take check, cash, money order, and no American Express. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we give unto the Lord because he's given to us first. And so as we keep worshiping, as we are so much in his realm, let's, you know, let's just begin to forget about where we are because I just did it just now. So praise God and let's give. Let's be a blessing in every area. Amen. church, we would be pushing back and we would be fighting back. And while everyone's worried about this virus that's bigger than that, it's a spiritual battle. And the enemy, the enemy is fighting and he's fighting hard and he's trying to take away the very thing that heals, which is Jesus. And when we're all singing together and we're all in one accord, there's healing. And if we take that away, the enemy wins. because we've been home and I'm not going to lie, it's easy to get lazy at home when church is sitting on your couch and when you have kids that are yelling for your attention and you say, I'll watch it later, you know, it's all right because I'm at home or I'm feeling thirsty, I'm going to go grab a drink. It's, it's easy to get lazy and then it makes it easy to come back and forget the culture of ELC, which is worship, which is Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit. Right now, we're just gonna we're gonna lift our voices, we're gonna lift our hands, and we're gonna welcome the Spirit back in this place, and we're gonna be glad to be here. We're gonna sing out the beautiful name of Jesus, and we're gonna cry out His name, and we're gonna demand healing in this place and out there, and we're gonna demand change in California, and we're gonna stop the enemy now before he gets bigger and stronger. Because my God is bigger, my God is stronger, and my God is greater. Today, while we sing this song, I challenge you to engage, to press in, not just for us, but for the people that can't, because they might be tired, but we're not, and we have the freedom to worship the way we want, to jump, to dance, and so, Father God, I thank you for this day, and as we go into this song, Lord, I just welcome the spirit in this place, Lord, we have somebody on stage saying, thank you, Lord,
sin was great, your love was greater. Separate us now. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus thank you Jesus just say his name Jesus 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 hallelujah Jesus Jesus, Jesus, such an awesome name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. I hold you, the veil torn before me. 
glorify you father we magnify your name god there's none like you oh god our king you are great and greatly to be praised that's what we need we need to proclaim the presence of jesus when there's chaos when he speaks order comes so we thank you father great are you lord we exalt the name of jesus over every situation we exalt the name of Jesus even over our country. We exalt the name of Jesus over our cities. We exalt the name of Jesus over our towns. We exalt the name of Jesus over our churches. We exalt the name of Jesus over our families. We exalt the name of Jesus even over ourselves. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Father. It's going to be a little bit different before we actually get to prayer. I'm going to share a few things. You guys can step back just momentarily. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit different of a service. You may be seated. And I want to read something. This week, I just, I weeped for the church like never before. And I said, God, <laughs> the church needs revival. We need your presence. And I want to read this. And we're going to go through this. And I'm going to share one thing. And then we're going to pray for our nation and for our country for our families, for our cities, for our towns, and for ourselves. But if you want to turn to your Bibles, this is Ephesians 4. And I could have picked up at the beginning, but y'all know that it takes us forever, so I won't. I'm going to pick up in verse 12. We're going to read quite a bit because there's nothing like reading it in black and white. It's easy to hear what everybody's saying, what everybody's opinion is, and that's great. But your opinion doesn't matter if you're a Christian. Only his opinion does. Amen? Like my mother would say, that's tight, but it's right. <laughs> So we're going to look at what God says in black and white. What does his word say? And this is what we're going to exalt. This is what we're going to lift up. This is what we stand on. This is what we believe in. This is where our hope is. Amen? And so he's coming out of saying about, you know, he's given some apostles, some prophets for the equipping of the saints. So we're going to pick it up there. And he says his intention was the perfecting. I'm reading out of the Amplified if you guys want to change in your little phones to Amplified. His intentions, I think it's Amplified Classic, by the way. His intention was perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. <laughs> That's what our job is, to build up Christ's body, the church, that it might develop until it attains oneness. And I love this because in the whole book of Ephesians, he talks about being in him. And being in him causes us to have unity and have oneness. Oneness of the faith and the comprehension of, of the full, accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we may arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and the completeness found in him. So then that we may no longer, what, be like children, tossed to and fro by change, gusts and teachings and wavering and every changing doctor of wind, praying, cunning and clever, of unscrupulous men that we no longer be children we're not on playgrounds fighting I'm on friend you you're going to friend me we're not friends anymore we are not children amen we are to be mature in the body of Christ and love helps you to mature up so we're not to be children so my job here is to help you to mature up to not be children that's what I've been put in the body of Christ is to help the body of Christ I'm you know we stand as pastors here at this church, but it's to help you to what? Mature in the body of Christ. It says gamblers engage in every shifting form of trickery and the invention of error to mislead. Rather, led our lives lovingly 
express the truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, truly, living truly, enfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way in all things in him who is the head, Christ. We are to grow up in all things whose head, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Because of him, the whole body of Christ, in all its various parts, we all have various parts, we're closely joined together, firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments which supply each part. We are a part of one another. The body can't get rid of the eye. It can't get rid of you. ever stubbed your toe? You stub your toe, you know your whole body hurts. If a part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. We are one body. Working properly, growing fully, maturing, building itself up in love. How are we built up? In love. Love has to be the hallmark of the believer. Well, it's taken. I've been loving. It's not working that long. You have not been in love. Jesus got on the cross, and none of us have suffered like he suffered. None of us have had nails in our hand and nails in our feet and a corner thrown on our heads. And he can still say, forgive them not, Father, for they know not what they do. We can love. Love is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. It's not a feeling. So that I solemnly testify in the name of the Lord and in his presence that you no longer live as heathens. So to walk not in love is living like a heathen, a Gentile, in their perverseness, who in their folly, vanity, and emptiness of their souls and the fertility of their minds, their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning be clouded. They are alienated, strangers, self-banished from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of ignorance, the want of knowledge, perception, and willful blindness that is deep sitting in them due to their hardness of heart. Do not let your heart be hardened during this time. The insensitive to their moral nature, in their spiritual apathy, they have become callous, past feeling, reckless. They have abandoned themselves to pray, to unbridled sensuality, eager, greedy, indulging in every impurity. But you did not learn so in Christ. You learned love. Could Jesus have fought? Of course he could have. But love won. Love's victory did not look like what everybody else thought victory was. Sometimes we need to change our concept of what winning is. Assuming you have really heard from him and been taught for him as the truth in Jesus. Strip yourself of your former nature. Discard. Put off your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lust and desire that springs from delusion. Be constantly removed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Put on the regenerated self created in God's image and likeness in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, reject all falsity. Being done with it now, let everyone express truth with his neighbor. For all are parts of one body and members of another. When angry, do not sin. And do not let your, do not let your wrath, your, ex, your um, being exasperated, your fury and indignation last until the sun goes down. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. We are in jeopardy of letting the devil have a foothold and get more territory because the body of Christ is not praying and refusing to walk in love. And you wonder why it's happening is because <laughs> we are letting, we are opening the door and letting him in. The, there is no excuse for a believer in Christ not to walk in love. None. How can I say that? Because God said the love of God has been poured forth in your heart by the Holy Spirit. When you got saved, you received the Holy Spirit, and he's giving you the ability to walk in love. Let no, let the steep, let the st- Thief, steal no more. The thief is stealing and taking territory while we are complaining, murmuring, grumbling, hateful, maligning each other, not walking in love. That's what it's talking about. But rather let him be industrious, making an honest living with his own hands so that he may be able to give to those in need. Let no, say let no, foul polluting language nor evil word or unwholesome, worthless Talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech which is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress <laughs> as fitting to the need of occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace to the hearer, God's favor to those who hear it. And this is a big part. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And in my heart this week, I felt the Holy Spirit is grieved 
at the state of the body of Christ. Forget the world. We're talking about in-house. Judgment starts with the house of God. It starts with you. Stop pointing the finger and point the finger to you. When will you pray? When will you pray? When will you pray? When will you pray? And take up the responsibility. Anybody can say, but who's willing to pray? Do you believe in prayer that if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and he will heal our land if we pray? Do you believe it, or is it just lofty speech that you think sounds like a great idea? And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not offend, vex, or sadden him. What has he been talking about? Foul and polluting language, things that how our behavior, how we've been acting, not being in one, that grieves the Holy Spirit. Whom you were sealed, marked, branded as God owned, secured for the day of redemption of the final deliverance through Christ from the evil and the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, passions, rage, bad temper, resentment, anger, animosity, quarreling, brawling, clamor, contention, slander, evil speaking, abusive and blasphemy language be banished from you. In other words, you should not be having to have those conversations. They shouldn't come out of your mouth. If you can't, my mother used to tell me when I was a little kid, it's not in the Bible, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. Some of you guys would do well to learn the spirit of shut up. Be banished from you with all malice and spite, ill will, and baseness of any kind. And become useful, helpful, kind to one another. Tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, lovinghearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. We were, this is, this last week was my last week for my, my Bible study called Influencer. And we're talking about how our influence, and Ms. Shelley said something in our, in our class at the end. And I said, I have to write this down. She says, are we going to choose to be politically correct or biblically correct? Culturally correct or biblically correct? And she said, Political correctness is choosing to say the wrong thing because you fear man. And biblical correctness is saying the right thing because you love God. Newsflash, God is not American. He's not on a donkey and he's not on an elephant. This is the truth of God's word. In Joshua, there is a story. This is right before Jericho, and the church is really facing a Jericho. We're facing a city that is walled with hate, mired <laughs> with unforgiveness, and the wall really needs to come down. It's only going to come down when the church gets in unity and begins to worship, begins to walk around, and begin to declare that that wall is going to come down. It says, now when, Jericho, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in the front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up and asked, he says, are you for us? Or are you for our enemies? And he said, neither. And that's what God is saying, neither. He's on the Lord's side. When will you walk in love? When will you stand up and pray for peace in our nation? When will you stand up and be a part of the solution and not the problem? God is not on either side. Newsflash. In all of our thinking we're right and thinking we're correct, if it is not motivated, if it does not come out of love, it does not come out of the truth of who he is, we are on the wrong side, and we are in jeopardy of hell. And I know that sounds very strong, but I'm telling you, we do not want what this is going to usher in. We better quickly repent, change our hearts, and get in line. Because what you see the trend, just wait, it will be worse. So as we begin to pray, we are going to pray for our president. Why? Because God, it's the office that God has allowed and ordained. You vote it. Whoever got in this time or the last time or next time, it does not matter. It's the office that matters. And God has a culture of honor, whether you know it or not. And being dishonorable is not okay in the body of Christ. We don't dishonor one another, and we do not dishonor no matter how we feel about them. It doesn't say because he does right or because he does wrong. It says pray for him. Why? Because he's in authority. I don't have to like him. I don't have to agree with him, but I do have to pray for him. To do so as a believer, I say I'm in Christ, is wrong. 
the governor. I don't care if you like him and you don't think we should wear a mask. It doesn't matter. Your responsibility is to pray for him, that God will give him wisdom, give him um, knowledge to help rule. When we pray for them, we will have peace. You know why there's no peace? Nobody's really praying. Let's be honest. I hear a lot of complaining. I, I see the, the post sometimes. Sometimes I have to come off because I don't want to get in the flesh and say something I don't need to say. But it's not the culture of Christ. We have a culture in the body of Christ of love. And we believe that that love will eventually work. All we have to do is wait on the Lord and trust him that he's big enough and bad enough to do whatever needs to be done. Maybe not in our time sometimes, but in his. We either trust that and we believe in the sovereignty and the providence of God or you don't. And I know that sounds really harsh. What an awesome prayer time. But we've got to be corrected. It is okay for us to be adjusted so that the whole body can be healed. But when we're out of alignment, everything hurts and the body is out of alignment. We have to have a culture of love. We have to have a, a, a culture of forgiveness. So it's my will. I choose to forgive. My will is to forgive. No matter what, no matter what, no, the Bible says if they do it over and over again, you forgive them. Up to what? What did Peter say? Oh, y'all know the word. So there's nothing that's too hard to be, to, that can't be forgiven. Yeah, that's okay. So it's not too difficult. You got to want to. You got to set in your heart. I don't care how they feel. I can't control what other people think and how they feel. All I can do is control me. I'm only responsible before God. When I stand before God, the great white throne judgment, he's going to say, boy, they did this and they did that. I'm not going to be able to say that to him. He's going to be inexcusable. You know the word, therefore live it. Walk in it. So as we stand, we're going to stand. They're going to turn back off the lights. Um, here, baby girl, if you'll come back up here and we're going we're gonna to pray because we need God to move. It's chaotic out there. But we need to speak and we need to declare. The Bible says what? Call those things that be not as though they were. Our responsibility is to pray and to say what God is saying, not what we say, not what we see. Because if you keep on saying what you see, you'll keep on see what, seeing what you say. So you have to de de declare, God, we speak peace into this situation. We declare your peace over our nation. We speak peace, Lord God. Peace be still, Lord God, in our nation of all this unrest, all of this anger. Anger begets anger, begets anger, begets anger. But love begets love. So, Father, we sow the spirit of love in our culture. We sow the spirit of love in our nation, Lord God. It'll start with us, Lord God. These walls can and will come down, Father. So, Father, we pray right now for our president. We pray, Lord God, you give him the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of truth and the spirit of, of good judgment, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to put a guard over his mouth that he will say and to declare things, Lord God, that will bring healing, will bring peace in our nation. We pray for our governor, Lord God, for a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of truth, a spirit of knowledge to be upon him, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you begin to change the tide and the hand in our nation. We declared, and it is so. There's enough people in here to change a nation. There was only 12 that changed the nation, for changed the world upside down. There's more, in us, more of us in here, Lord God. So we declare a spirit of truth over our nation, a spirit of peace over our nation, Lord God. We're not saying that it takes away and we don't need to have conversations, but we can have love. So we declare your love over every situation. We declare your love in our homes. We declare your, our, your love, Lord God, in our minds and in our thought processes, Lord God. Chain, turn us back to you, Father God. Turn our nation back to you, Lord God. We repent for the hatred that's been said. We repent for the things that have been um, maligning. We repent, Lord God, for the things that have been hateful, that, that cast down. We repent, Lord God, for the things that we've participated in. We repent for the things that we've said with our mouths. And we ask you to forgive us, God. We ask you to cleanse us, God. We ask you to heal us, God. We ask you, Lord God. We cry out, Lord God, to, to, to send your spirit upon us. Speak into our situation. It's chaotic in our world. But when you speak, order comes. When you speak, chaos ceases. When you speak, peace comes when you speak healing comes so God we cry out for you like never before heal our land in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Holy 
Jesus, we cry out for your Holy Spirit. Come on. We cry out for your Holy Spirit, God. So we thank you for this time, and we're getting ready to go to love time and break. So go and fist pump somebody if you're at home. <laughs> love on somebody as we take a little bit break and get ready to hear the word of God. Amen. And invite the Holy Spirit in. He will come in. Amen. Be blessed.
from what I ate last night. Only at ELC can you act crazy like the... Wow. Yes, I'm ready. Cool. Awesome. All right. Can you open your Bibles to uh, James chapter 3, please? Hallelujah. And we're going to get to Matthew in a second. He hasn't gone anywhere in 2,000 years, so he'll be just fine. Oh, praise his name. Well, what was funny is that my wife and I were talking this morning, and, and, sh- and, and she said, Honey, so what do you want me to do today at church? I said, What do you mean? We're, 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 I don't know. And so, <laughs> and so uh, James chapter 3, and if you can, uh, if, uh, verse 2, and, and if you can do the Amplified Bible, that, that, that'd be even gooder. And so, um, so sh- I said, I don't know what I want you to do. I, you know, she goes, Well, do you want me to pray? I said, Well, of course, you know. And, and so she goes, well, um, I have something to share. And I said, you know what? So do I. And we, we began to discuss it. And I said, stop. I don't hear what you got to say. Because I want to be, I want to see how cool God is and make sure that we're on the same page. And we were. And so um, um, what I'm going to say, this is going to go for, and this has nothing to do with our message. But um, I'm going to say this to our, our church family, and I'm also going to say it to anyone who, who's listening who goes to church. Because if you've been following me, I've been, fo- I've been doing these series called Attention All Christians. And I've had a plethora of number of pastors talk to me and call me and ask my opinion and me them. And, and this thing I'm talking about right now is happening in, li- in every multicultural church in the, in the world, as well specifically America. And um, so... If you're online, if you're here, I want you to say, Pastor Jerry, I love you. Okay. Uh, And I'm going to, and back, there is a spirit that is carried with everything good or bad, everything. And um, it's my anointing and and my call to eradicate that when I see it. And um, there was a season that we had some scorpions in here, and I've, brought out the uh, uh, big guns, and I, and I said, I want you to kill everything in sight, you know, butterflies and scorpions all together, so, and they did, they, they killed everything, I won't do that, uh, but years ago, um, we had an issue in our church, is it Aaron on, or is it just me, I'm just sweating chocolate right now, uh, yeah, it's the spirit of God, okay, praise God, we had a situation in the church where we had a leader who was fornicating, adultery, and um, we had someone who was willingly doing it on a regular basis and didn't care, and when we confronted them, they lied to our faces, and um, so then what I did in the Bible says that if, if it happens, you bring in from the church and, uh, you, and you rebuke them so that all can fear. And uh, <laughs> we did that, and I don't, I can't remember up until this day, and, and my wife can correct me if I'm wrong, I, we haven't had another sexual issue in our church. And so, um, and, and I think three or four of you guys were here when that happened. And so, um, hallelujah. This, what I'm going to talk about, has the same spirit with it. Um, James 3, 2 says this. For we all often stumble and fall and often and, and offend in many ways, in, in many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things, he is a fully developed, he, ha, he is a fully developed character and a perfect man or woman, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. If we set bits in the horse's mouths, to make them obey us, we can turn their whole bodies around. Likewise, look at ships, though they are great and are driven by rough winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the impulse of the helmsman 
determines, or the captain. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it can boast of great things. See how much wood or how great a forest a tiny spark can set ablaze. And the tongue is fire. The tongue is a world of wickedness set among our members, contaminating and depraving the whole body and setting on fire the wheel of birth, the cycle of man's nature being itself ignited by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea animal can be tamed and has been tamed by human genius or nature. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It is re restless, undisciplined, irrevocable, evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord. This is key. We bless the Lord and Father. And with it, we curse men who are made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come forth blessing and cursing, things tiny, Think these things, my brethren, ought not to be so. Does a fountain send forth simultaneously from the same opening fresh water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine figs? Neither can a salt spring furnish fresh water. Who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Let him by his noble living show forth his good works, with the unobtrusive humility, which is the proper attitude of true wisdom. But, here we go now. If you have bitter jealousy, envy, and contention, rivalry, uh, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not pride yourself on it, and thus be in defiance of and false to the truth. This superficial wisdom, that superficial wisdom, what we see, is not such as comes down from above, it doesn't come from the earth, from, from, from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, animal, even devilish, demonical. For wherever there is jealousy, envy, and contention, rivalry, and selfish ambition, there will also be confusion, unrest, dis, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. But the wisdom from above, which is from heaven, is first of all, here we go, pure, undefiled. Then it is peace-loving. I love peace. I don't want to have drama. Courteous, considerate, gentle. It is willing to yield. That means the spirit of shut up. Yield to reason. Full of compassion and good fruits. It is wholehearted and straightforward impartial and unfeigned, free from doubt, wavering in its sincerity. Watch this. And the harvest of righteousness, of conformity to God's will in thought and deed is the fruit of the seed sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves and in others. That peace, which means concord, agreement, and harmony between individuals with undisturbedness in a peaceful mind, free from fears and agitation, passions, and moral conflicts. I have some things written down here I'm going to share with you guys. They aren't up there. They're just things that God gave me literally this morning. And, he's, and I said, Dad, I said, if I say all this, it's going to make, well, join to cut out Matthew. He says, no, they need to hear the word too. I said, okay, well, all right, this is your church, not mine. So, what is worse than being a racist? What is worse than being a racist? It's being unforgiving. Because unforgiveness will send you to hell. And I felt so excited and so proud to have a church that was every color in the rainbow. And I still am. And I was happy. People coming, man, man, Pastor, you're doing, you're honest, you got every color here. Awesome. It's great. But I didn't know we had a church so full of racists. And I'm talking black racists, conservative racists, people who truly don't understand the other side of the aisle and don't care. Because when you keep spouting your opinion 
on social media, you don't care what happens to what you say. And that's not peace-loving, that's not gentle, and that's not long-suffering. And I'm going to address some things that I am seeing in this church and what I've been talking. I mean, I've got pastors calling me who were just almost in tears. If you've got an all-black church, you can all think the same. You can all, you can, and you can probably say what you want to say on Facebook and, and get away with it. If you've got an all-white church, you can think what you want to think. And say what you want to say, and you'll be fine. Oh, you're right. You're so right. We're like, oh, my God, you're so correct. You know, you'll be right. <laughs> but, but if you've got a church that has got blacks, whites, Asians, Filipinos, Native Americans, and Mexicans in there, you can't say what you want to say on Facebook and Instagram. Because they're going to think you're talking about them. Whether or not you cloak it in a political group. You've got to think about what you say before you say it. And I'm not going to cower to the, the what is it, the, the Me Too movement, any, any other, there's only one movement I'm, shut up, Jerry. There's only one movement I, I, I submit to. Well, actually two, but that's, 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 that's for another story. So God's moving. Thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. So. Unforgiveness is not, av- is not avoidance. I'm sorry, forgiveness is not avoidance. You go, well, and here's where I'm so sick of hearing. Oh, I'm good. No, you're not. What you've done is you said, well, pastor, um, I don't agree with them. And, I, and now I'm, I'm hearing, well, I know how they really feel. What you're doing is this. You're saying, you know what? You go on that side of the world. I'll go over here and I'll see you in life. But don't ask me to help you out. That's demonic. Because Jesus says in Matthew that he will forgive you as and at the same rate you forgive the person. Forgiveness is acting as if it never happened. That's forgiveness. And here's the next thing. If you are offended at someone, you you now have the biblical responsibility to go to that person who offended you. Matthew 18. And if you don't, you're in sin and you'll go to hell with them. And I'm saying that to my black partners, my white partners, and everybody in between. If someone offended you on Facebook, it is your job to call them on the phone. Don't text them on Facebook so the whole world can be on your side and clap with you. It is your job now, my black partners and my white partners and my Mexican partners and every color in between, my Asians and my, and my native, all of y'all, if you're offended and you don't go take care of it biblically, you are in sin and you could go to hell. So I challenge you in the next seven days to go do that. Go do it. Go do it. Go be bold. Don't come talk to me about how how mad you are. I'm sick of hearing it. I'm so sick of hearing it. On both sides of the aisle, the conservatives and the the non-conservatives. I am, I am on fire. The Bible says this, who the sun sets free is free as deep. So I didn't need 1776 to tell me I was free. I was free when Jesus died for my sins and rose. I'm going to celebrate Juneteenth. I'm going to celebrate July the 4th. If, if there's a white holiday, I celebrate that too. I celebrate uh, Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Are there in the Filipino holidays? I don't celebrate. I celebrate all those too. If there's food, I will be there, baby cakes. <laughs> I will be there. So both sides have been really ugly, really, really ugly. And here's what I'm getting at right now. And if you don't understand the purpose of something, misuse is inevitable. Platform is not a gripe session. It's not there you go vomit what you see on on the news. If you're a Christian, your life is not your own. So you listen to your boss, who is Jesus Christ, and you put on there what he says put on there. Don't go and go off on Sisolak or Trump. And if Biden wins and Trump loses, then you know what? We are going to have a prayer meeting and pray for President Biden. Because that is our biblical response. If if Trump wins, we will have a prayer meeting and everybody is going to pray for him. (laughs) Yes. 
Because you know what? That's biblical. And we and so I'm and so I'm I'm sitting here as a pastor and look at people going saying that the riots are okay. You have lost your mind. You have lost your Holy Ghost mind. You think they're okay? Protesting is fine, but riots are demonic. I have people say, "Well, we should kill all liberals." Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? So that's why people are mad. And I'm sitting there going, you go to my church. <laughs> I've heard words like, Pastor, now I know how they really feel about me. No, you don't. Here's the deal. They've always felt that way. But the issue is this. Because of, see, like I say, everyone is like a tube of toothpaste. When you squeeze, you'll, you'll, you'll see what's in it. And you're seeing what people believe as far as their voting preference. If you are black and someone is white, or if you are a liberal or, or, or a Democrat and someone is a conservative, and you see a conservative say, hey, you know what, the liberals believe this. Well, if you believe it, okay, be okay with it. But if they're being hurtful and vindictive, then if you don't like it and they're in our church, then you call them up. Say, hey, you know, what did you mean by that? Are you, are you talking to me? I dare you. I dare you. That's Christ. Because then you won't have this, well, that's how I think they feel about me. You don't know. That's called mind reading. That's called bearing false witness. See, my wife and I, and, and we're teaching our kids, we don't identify with any race any citizenship, any voting party. We are Christians first. We are spiritual beings. We are bought with a price. Jesus took everything from me when I get, when I get he took my race from me <laughs> or, or, or my ability to identify because Acts 7, 28 says in Christ we live, in Christ we live and move and have our identity. So when someone calls on Facebook the N-word, they ain't talking about me. Who are you talking Who are you talking about? They're not talking about me. They're, they're talking about a dead man. I'm, I'm, I, I am the blessed of the Lord. I'm Holy Ghost. And, and, and what Alex said is so true. If they say we can't sing anymore, then you know what? We're going to pray in tongues. And they better west, they better hope we were singing. Go We're going to have every wall. We're going to have homosexuals coming to Jesus. We're going to have liberals and conservatives coming. They better hope. They better hope they don't say that to us. We'll be out in the street, not street, streets praying in tongues. Oh, you say we can't sing. We're going we're gonna to just pray in tongues for about eight hours a day. So now here we go. Now. And, and y'all, I'm, I'm almost done, so I'm, Lord, am I done? Okay, I'm not done, okay. Church, we've heard, I've heard things like, well, I'm not coming back to ELC because people don't like me there. Hey, you know what? Awesome. Go find a perfect church, and then you'll make it imperfect. You, you, I am giving you your letter to leave right now, if that's how you feel. Do not come back here. Don't come back here, if that's how you feel. Because what you're doing is you're just spitting in Jesus' face and me and my wife's face. And I'm, and I'm okay with that. You know why? Because God is my supply, not y'all. And the people who are saying that don't, don't tithe anyway. <laughs> and last but not least, the Bible talks about how leaders will be held to a higher standard. The Bible talked about some of us shouldn't always be leaders because the issue is this. You can't handle the heat in the kitchen. You just can't because then you'll burst and explode. We've had a plethora of leaders leave because, Pastor, uh, I didn't think it was this bad. Yeah, yeah. So as leaders from this, what is this? This is June, July, July the 5th at 11.44 a.m. We, in this church, my, my wife hates those ideas, in this church, because I, I, I can't control what happens at Central, at Life, at New Community, at church, I, but I can control what happens here through the power of the Holy Ghost. Leaders, that means pastors, ministers, servant leaders, and department heads. You are not allowed to spout your political beliefs on Facebook anymore. No more. No more. Our goal should be to 
propagate Jesus. Propagate Jesus. Propagate Jesus. Propagate Jesus. Propagate, because here's the deal. I had a saying back in the day when we first started. I said, if you are out getting drunk every night and fornicating every night, and you say you go to my church, don't say you go to my church. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because they look at me. Because I've had the question asked, do they go to your church? And I, who is that? I said, oh, no, no, I don't know them. <laughs> so here's the deal. If, and now, I know it's a free country, but, it, but, but this is not a free church. And, 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 and life has consequences. And you can do what you want to do. And my, and my daddy always says, son, if you feel like there comes a point in your young life that you can't follow these rules, there is the door. And my heart is I love every partner. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. But we've got to raise the standard here, church. We have to. We have to raise it back up. We've got to be different than the world. So if you are a leader in, in this church, in, in, in that column, and you feel like you have to talk about President Trump or, or Joe Biden or any liberal, and, 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 you, and then you are free to resign today. Today. And I, I, I want you to call me tomorrow and say, Pastor Jerry, I love you, but I'm stepping down from being a deacon. I'm stepping down from being a minister. I'm, I'm stepping down. And that's, it's okay because it's a free country, but you can't do it with my stamp of approval or God's. And I think that's fair because I'm tired of the phone calls. I'm tired. I'm so sick of them. I'm text messages. It's, 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 it's like having a kindergarten class. <laughs> Your pastors, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, think of, it's, 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 it is. So you know what? As a church family, we've got to be more mature and stop sucking on bottles and eat some ribeye <laughs> and some pork. Hallelujah. And, and we have to walk in love, meaning if someone has offended you on Facebook, I'll say it here and here. You go to them on the phone. You say, hey, can we have coffee if you're from New York? Or if you're from the South, say, can we have some coffee? And say, listen, did you really mean what you said because that really hurt me? I've done it to, I've done it to Pastor. I've, I've done it to Joe. I've done it to, I've, I say, hey, guys, did, did you really mean that? Okay, can you explain it to me? I've done it a lot. And, then I, and they go, oh, no, I didn't mean that. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Just because someone doesn't vote the way you vote does not mean they're going to hell. And doesn't mean that you've got to not be their friend anymore. Hallelujah. All right. So that's that in a nutshell. Now you just sit down. What, baby? You got something? Now open your Bibles <laughs> to Matthew 21, verse 1. Where's my little handle? Oh, thank you, Bobby. See, you gave the, the, uh, yes. Push it real good. Sorry. I went back in the day. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, everybody good? Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the word that came forth from you through me, Lord. And hopefully I said it correctly, Father. I thank you, Lord, that, that our hearts are open to your move, and we will be a church exemplary in our love and our long-suffering and the fruits of the Spirit in every area, Lord. Amen and amen. All right, so Matthew 21, verse 1, Jesus is making his triumphal entry. Hallelujah. It says, Now when they drew near, to, to, near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and the, uh, and the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, <laughs> that's so good, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he, uh, and immediately he's, um, he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, who is Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and, set, and set him on them. 
and a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Hence, palm. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Hallelujah. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Like three all knew it. Okay, all right, all right. We got to do that one of these days. Hey, uh, Autumn, that's on yours right there. Um, so verse, now this is verse 10. It's so good. It says, and when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was, everyone say it with me, moved. When Christ comes to you, you are hopefully, he moves you. He moves you. You should get chills. You get, when you come into the house of God, you should go, ooh, this is the house of God. When I went to Jerusalem, we went to um, Chorazin. And when you walk into the temple, the steps, they're all different heights. And then they may be long and then high and like that. And you got to do like this to get in. And then um, the, the, oh, the door is like, is like this tall. So you got to come up here and come down and lift up. And then you got to squat down and then get into the presence of God. They want you to know where you're coming. They want you to know that, hey, you know what? This is not your house. This, this is not a building. This is the house of God. So when you walk into the house of God, that there should be a who. It, it should move you. It should move you. Verse 11 says this. So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. So when you look at the life application commentary, it says this, it says, the crowd chanted words from Psalms 118, 25, 26. It says, save now, I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Watch this. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Watch this. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. There is a blessing in being in the house of God. There is a blessing in being here in this building. Now, we've learned that the building can't always be here, but you know what? Wherever you go, you carry the house. You carry the name of Jesus. You carry his, his nature, his, his authority, his passion. So wherever you go, and that's a blessing in coming here on Sundays and on Fridays and on Wednesdays. Am I prophesying? Anytime you come here, there is a blessing when you walk in this door and also when you leave. Because when you leave here, we pray over you. And you've been praying over. And so when you leave this building, you go, you know, man, I've been blessed. Ooh, I've been blessed. Hallelujah. I remember back in the day when I, when I was younger and my, my grandmother was I think she was maybe, no, she, no, she was Holiness Pentecostal Church of God in Christ. And you'd walk out of the church, whew, whew, I feel the Holy goes all on me all night long. And she, and she would be just shaking because after five hours of church, <laughs> after five hours, baby, you're going to feel something. You're going to be, it ain't 30 minutes and, and a bye-bye, it's five hours of getting the, get, get, get the devil out of you, you know. So, and some people took longer, Hallelujah. So, so, they, so it says, long live the king was the meaning behind their joyful shouts because they knew that Jesus was an intentionally fulfilling prophecy. This was the crowd's acclamation that he indeed was or, or, or indeed the long-awaited Messiah. The people were sure their liberation from Rome was at hand. Watch this, y'all. While the crowd correctly saw Jesus as a fulfillment of these prophecies, they did not understand where Jesus' kingship would lead him. They expected him to be a national leader who would restore their nation to its former glory. Thus, they were deaf to the words of their prophets and blind to Jesus' real mission. When it, came up, when it became apparent that Jesus was not going to fulfill their hopes, their hopes, their vision, their plans. Many people would turn against him. Another crowd would cry out, crucify him when Jesus stood on trial only a few days later. See, Christianity is not about rules, y'all. It's about relationship. It's not about rules. It's about relationship. When you are in relationship with somebody, you'll go through a whole lot for them. And you won't leave them so quickly. Quickly, that's a new Holy Ghost word. So, the next part is when Jesus clears the temple. I love this. Now, let's preview what's going on here with, with the commentary. It says, Jesus entered the great city and went to the temple, entering its, four, its, its outer courts. 
as did many in the crowd. People came to the temple in Jerusalem to offer sacrifices. Hmm. When you come to church, you bring a sacrifice. Interesting. God had originally instructed the people to bring sacrifices for, now watch this, from their own, meaning their possession, their own flocks, in Deuteronomy 12, 5, 7. However, however, the religious leaders, air quotes, leadership had established four markets on the, on the Mount of Olives where such animals could be purchased. The religious leaders usurped the authority of God and gave them animals that they could buy in the outer courts instead of bringing their own sacrifice. I'm going somewhere with this. This, is greatly, this greatly angered Jesus. Let's look at that verse here uh, in Deuteronomy. It says, But you shall seek the place where the, where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place, and there you shall go. There you shall take your, it won't say your, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your what? What? The heave offerings of your hand, your vowed offerings, your free will. And y'all notice that tithe ain't an offering. You can't offer something that you owe. Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to offer you half the price for my rent this, uh, this month. Oh, well, then we're going to offer you a place on the sidewalk. <laughs> Your rent is your responsibility. Your free will offerings and the firstborn of your herd flocks. And there shall you shall eat before the Lord your God. So you can eat in church, praise God. And you shall rejoice in all to which you have put your hand to, you and your households, in which the Lord your God has blessed you. Hallelujah. Praise his name, God. Now, I'm going to show you why he was so mad, y'all, okay? This is Jesus. Um, it's not up there, but write this down in your book, in, in your notes, and you can go later on. This is 1 Chronicles 21, 22. This is when David went to um, the Jebusite, Arana, and, he, and there was a plague amongst his people. And he said, huh. I got to do something to make this plague stop. It says, uh, it says, David said to Arana, let me buy this threshing floor. A threshing floor is just an area that you can sift your wheat and thresh things. Thresh your floor, and I'll buy it at its full price. Then I will build an altar to the Lord there so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my Lord, the king. This is Arana talking. Take it, my Lord, the king, and use it as you wish. Or Ron said, David, I, watch this, y'all. I will give the auction, uh, oxen for the burnt offerings and the threshing boards for wood to build a fire on the altar and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give it to you all. Stop the presses. But King David replied, Arana, no, 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 no. I insist on buying it for full price. Why? I will take, I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord, I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. And that's what they were doing in Jerusalem. They were just buying doves. They were buying stuff that was nasty. They were, and they were saying, Lord, here's my best. Don't you think God knows what you just bought 20 feet away? And trust me, we have raised, well, when I was 16, I raised pigeons. Uh, we had cows. We had horses. We had a garden. And it is work. Digging the ground, it is work. It cost me sweat. It cost me getting kicked a couple times. I had to dig holes. I had to, it, it was work. I had to, I had to load up hay. It cost you something. That's why the tithe is so important to God. He said, you know what? Wow, you're going to give me 10%. Because, see, <laughs> you, by you giving that 10%, it anoints your 90. But if you keep that 10%, it curses everything. Let me say it again. When you don't tithe, everything gets cursed. Everything. Your kids, your cars, your job, your health, everything gets cursed. That's why you tithe. It's not a rule. It's about relationship. What you're saying when you don't tithe is that you don't trust God. You don't trust God. You trust your job more. 
when you're focused more on your rent and your car note and everything else other than the tithe belongs to God, not to your vacation. I have a, I have a thing I say for you. Don't take your tithe on vacation. Tithes hate hotels. They hate gas. They hate uh, buying car tires. Tithes hate, uh, right now you go to California, you got to do everything yourself on a hotel. But, guys, don't use your tithe. Don't, you know what, don't, don't eat your tithe. Hallelujah. That's it for that. All right. Verse 12. Then Jesus went to the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the table of, uh, of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it into a den of thieves. So, and Jesus also said this in John 2.16, it says this, it says, and he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then it says, then his disciples remembered, watch this, because they were schooled in the word of God, that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. The Empire Bible says this, it says, uh, and, and his disciples remembered that it is written in the Holy Scripture, zeal, the fervor of love for your house will eat me up. I will be consumed with jealousy for the honor of your house. See, you must have visible and fervent passion for the house of God. You must have visible and fiery passion for the house of God. You must not be able to, you can't wait to get here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's, oh thank God's open. You, you, you know, uh, what's it, Black Friday? Black Friday. I guess, never mind. Shut up. Um, what is that? Is, is Black Friday, is it the day after the Thanksgiving? Okay. People line up at 1 o'clock in the morning, Best Buy. Line up at 1 o'clock in the morning out here. Well, it, Pastor, it's, it's kind of hot. You know, it's, it's, it's a little chilly. It is never chilly in Vegas. I'm sorry. Rarely ever chilly in Vegas. Go to Michigan in February. Verse 14 says this. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Hallelujah. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to him, Yes. This is so good, y'all. Have you not read, rhetorical, out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Another way of saying this, if you break it down into the Greek, it says, out of the mouths of unskilled and untaught, you have formed, framed, and restored the story of God. Hallelujah. I had a parent call me this week, and they asked me, said, Pastor, we have a very important question. I said, what? She says, is it sin to eat boudin? And I said, well, no, I, I love boudin. Well, you know, it has blood in it. And, and that's in the Bible. I said, well, and so I explained him why it's okay. Well, his child has said, Daddy, we can eat it. And he goes, why? He goes, because the Bible says, no, she said we can't eat it. Because the Bible says, yeah, eat my flesh and drink my So out of the mouths of babes, God has ordained the story. So even the kids know it's okay to eat boudin. Hallelujah. If you never had boudin, you don't, you don't know what you're missing. Oh, my gosh. Don't buy it here in Vegas. Don't, don't buy it in Vegas. Boudin, it is a Cajun sausage, and it is, oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, Ron, that made me play in tongues right there. Y'all, we were blessed this week because we were able to get a hog, and, and, and my wife and I cut off the feet, and she put the feet in a pot, and she put literally salt and pepper and garlic in it. And, yo, know, I had pig feet for the first time in 20 years. It was pain. Oh, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. It was, it was, I was, I was just, every part I tasted, I could see myself at my grandmother's porch. It was a beautiful thing. It really was, y'all. Oh, my son about grossed out. But hey, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Here's, hey, uh, Adele, I'm going to skip down to verse 17. It says, uh, then he left them and went out in the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. I guess it was a holy day in there, so praise God. No one got that. Gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Holy day in, holiday in. Okay. All right. 
Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, hmm, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled. How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, or shall I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, it was a mountain. Now watch this, you don't talk about the mountain, you talk to the mountain. I don't feel good. No, you talk to your body. You say, uh uh-uh, uh, nobody. You, you know, you, you line up the word of God. Line the word of God. So it says, <laughs> but also if you say this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So when you ask for it in prayer, you'll receive it. But you got to have doubtless faith. The tree exhibited, watch this, y'all. This is so good. It exhibited a false representation of its designed purpose. That is good. The tree exhibited a false representation of its designed purpose, like some Christians do and are. Oh, you're saved. Oh, you got a cross around your neck. Oh, you go to church. Oh, you haven't cussed in four days. Awesome. Awesome. What are you representing? So the tree exhibited a false representation of, of its design purpose. Or anyone can display a covering, but few people actually display fruit. You look so good. You look so Christian-y. But when they take a bite of your apple or your orange, it's sour, it's wormy, it's moldy, and they spit it out. And then they get mad. Watch this. Not at the fruit, but at the tree. So you could be turning people against God by your lack of Christian authority. Fruit is a representation of character, connection, value, and integrity. Fruit is a representation of character, connection, value, and integrity. When we go look for watermelons, my wife and I purpose know how to get one. I, I look for a color. I look for a, a weight. I look for a, a how press it. I, I, I like watermelon. I, I, I got to stay away from it sometimes. So now, how do you obtain doubt-proof faith? We all want that. How, do you, how are you able to attain what God has already said is yours? Well, I'm going to give you some keys real quick, and then we'll be out of here. Number one, you've got to be able to hear from God. Okay? Romans 10, 10 says, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If you ain't reading, then you ain't hearing. If you ain't hearing, then you ain't walking in faith. And number two is this. You've got to believe what the Word of God says at face value. Do the research, but at face value. But don't try to conceptualize it. No, because your brain is too small. Mark 11, 24. Believe, believe, and you'll have it. Believe, and you'll receive it. Believe it. We, my wife and I started praying for our kids and our church before we even saw it. Hallelujah. We prayed for y'all back in 2006 before we moved here. I, I, and, and I have actual m- tablets in my drawer that I'd written down in 06 of what I wanted in a church, and you all exemplify that. Hallelujah, praise God. So you've got to believe that you have it before you receive it. Number three, you, you, gotta, you, you have to confess it, y'all. Confess it. Confess what the Word says, not what your senses relay to your brain. Confess what the word says, not what your sense says. Oh, I'm hurting. No, that's a sense. I, 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 no, I'm healed the Lord. Confess what the word says, not what your, oh, wow, I have nothing in my account today. I've tithed. Lord, this is your job, not mine. You don't confess what you see. You confess what he sees, and he sees supernaturally. Also, um, Romans 4, 17 says that we should confess those things that are not as though they were. If you get a flat tire, don't say it ain't flat. Okay, it's flat. You confess Amco to come here and fix it for you, all right? Oronte, heke, vente, 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 come, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or b- b- the church, the men's, uh, the, uh, the men's retreat, yeah, what, two flat tires? Two? 
And he, he confessed, and all the brothers came and helped him out. So praise God. And number four, make continuous actions which correspond to the word that you've heard and believed. Make continuous actions which correspond to the word that you have and believe. Now watch this, church. Here's what I want us to do with this right here. Galatians 6, 9, it says, Do not become weary in your well-doing. Oh, you come on, Autumn. Because in due season, in due season, you will receive and reap if you don't faint or if you don't quit. Some of us quit four inches from the finish line. You quit believing. You quit praying. And you just quit. And God's like, you just had a few more inches to go. <sighs> Let's not become weary in our well-doing. As we walk the walk of faith, y'all, it's faith. It's, it's, it is a marathon, not a sprint. We, we don't want spir spiritual sprinters. N no rabbits here. We need some turtles. Turtles. Just, just keep on going, baby. Keep on going, baby. Keep on going, baby. I'm not where I, I'm not there yet, Lord, but Lord, I'm not perfect, but I'm making progress. That's important. Forget perfection. Let's have some progress here. Progress. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Praise God. Father God, we just thank you for this morning that we've had to come and glorify you and lift you high, Father. Bless this time that we've had, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word that came forth from worship, from Alexis, from Autumn, from my wife, the word that you gave me, Father God. Let this go into good ground, good seed, and let it prosper, Lord. And you water, you send Apollos, <laughs> Apollos, Apollos to water, Lord, and you get the increase. Hallelujah. We thank you for peace in ELC. No more envy, no more frustration. That those who have sinned in unforgiveness, those who have sinned in talking about our leaders, convict them, Lord, now. Let them receive it in love and go and make reformations for it, Father. Make amends to those they've hurt. And let it be a Holy Ghost move, Father. We thank you, Father God, for this morning. We give you all honor and all glory, Lord. And everybody said, amen and amen. Have a great week. We'll see you all next week. Love y'all.